Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame and low time frame bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the plan that I shared at the beginning of my holiday on the 4th of September, where the expectation was price moving down to around 25k, the daily naked point of control, then moving up to that 27.2k area. Observe the reaction here for then a potential move to the downside. If I put that same brushed line on the chart over here, then you can see price pretty much throughout my whole holiday followed this plan, moving down, hitting that daily naked point of control at 25k then moving up and now ranging at around 27.2k and in this video we will assess the probabilities with the different scenarios of either continuation or rejection and seeing more lows. The first scenario I like to talk about is the medium time frame bullish scenario where we have a finished a five wave structure to the downside and this is the beginning of an impulse to the upside. In this scenario, the low of wave 5 has been made on the 1 to 1, taken from the high to the low of this wave 1 to the high of wave 4. This is a one of the targets for a wave 5, but one has to say that it is a very shallow target for a wave 5. Most common target for a wave 5 is between the 1.236 and the 1.618 taken from the low of three to the high of four but you can see price did not reach that low also price now created a double bottom over here low number one and there low number two and double bottoms as well as double tops are like a magnet for price so this is something we at least have to consider but in this particular scenario you want this to be the end of the impulsive structure this is wave five and this is the beginning of continuation to the upside now that also means that after wave four was made at the zero dot five which is a valid target for a wave four this over here has to be an impulse to the downside so a valid five wave move to end wave five and if we zoom in to that structure and we go to the one hour time frame then over here you can see that first of all wave four is incredibly long in time if you compare the time of wave two with the time of of wave four with the trend based FIP time over here taken from the low of one to the high of two and then you put it on the low of three you can see that wave four is 10 times longer in time compared to wave two which is incredibly long and you know does not usually really make sense in Elliott waves as you know wave four usually maximum has like three or four times the length of wave two but 10 times is very 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 long another thing is is that the end of wave four is then likely to be here because if this is the end of wave four you can kind of count this as a three wave structure not a five wave structure but we want to see a five wave move in the final wave five so over here we then have to count this as a one two and then a three four and a wave five but even even more locally if we want to count this as a five wave move to the downside over here we get a bit of a problem because of this one candle to the upside so we then have a one two you'd be looking for a three four five inside a wave three you can then also count one two and then what right so we have then a one two where is three where is the four and where is the five inside this way three so it doesn't look pretty but this is the only way to count this if you want the impulse to end over here and this to be the beginning of a new wave one and therefore continuation to the upside where then you want to see continuation all the way to higher prices 32k next now another i suppose bullish and then bearish scenario is that we get a bigger three wave structure however i first like to see this high being hit before i'm going to talk about this particular scenario because that's very much on the cards if price can manage to take this high if we go to the medium time frame scenario then we expect another low to be made so this low over here has been taken on a couple of charts but not on the coinbase chart as well as some other charts it did not reach this low and based on statistics that i uh, got in the past and recorded myself there's a high probability that all the charts will align and take this low and especially now that price created a double bottom which as mentioned is like a magnet for price at about 24.7k now if price would take these lows there is quite a bit of a dip for me before I have the next support area which for me is here between 21.8k and 22.6k and if price goes below that level then the next one is 20.2k to 20.6k and then below that one is 18.7k to 19.1k now if we look more locally 
Currently, price is inside that resistance area over here, as shown earlier, around the 27.2k area. So that is where we're ranging right now. But just above, as well as below price, we have a support and resistance area I at least want to show you. The one above is between 27.7k and 27.9k. We have a daily and a daily naked point of control here. It is very high compared to the high that we have on the left. If we take a fib from this high to this low over here, and we toggle on the 886, 786 and the golden pocket that you can see that this blue box is at the 886 and the 886 rare target for a wave 2, common target for an X or a B where in the bearish scenario we look at this over here as an impulse and this is a three wave corrective structure but more about that in a second. Just want to say the 886 is a common target for B or X so if price is reaching this high and hits the 886 then there's a higher probability that this is an ABC structure to the downside potentially um, instead of this being a one two and potentially a way three to the downside so that's just a, a little nugget there and to the downside over here a support area to keep in mind is between 25.7k and 25.9k now the more bearish scenario over here as just shortly explained is this one where in the bearish scenario we are looking at this move to the downside as an impulse one two three four five wave move where this is then a three wave a a three wave b and then we have a five wave c to the upside where one of the targets for a wave c is the 1.618 over here which very nicely is respected also on top or just above the uh, resistance area we had over here but as you can see price wicked inside the 1.618 but actually didn't close any candles above which is very nice now after this corrective structure you don't want to see continuation you want to see a partner lag of this move to the downside so that you at least create a three wave structure to the downside if not a bigger five wave move to the downside but that is yet to be seen of course we first want to see price even going this low and then after it takes this low we observe how price is going to react at these lower levels if we look at the CVD divergences and we zoom in to the 15 minute, then you can see first of all that we do have bigger bearish CVD divergences over here, lower high on price, higher high on the CVD, as I'll show you in a second, on the four hour chart. Now the most, the more local CVD divergences are more trustworthy, but it is important to always keep an eye, an eye on the higher time frame bear, uh, CVD divergences. And if we go to the four hour time frame and I zoom out, then over here you can see on the blue line that we have a lower high on price but you can also see over here we have a higher high if you look at my horizontal cursor line we have a higher high on blue and that is important bearish cvd divergence on the blue line and also actually almost or maybe even also on yellow over here as you can see with this high over here so we might have some bearish or we do have bearish cvd divergences on the four hour chart and if we zoom in more locally then what i think was very nice as well is price rejected over here moved to the downside created some local bearish cvd divergences now these already played out as price took the target low which is this one over here it wicked inside very nicely indeed and now over here more locally price started to create bullish cvd divergences it has to be said however that with this low it's the third time there's bullish cvd divergences with this low over here so higher low in price lower low in the cvd and if i zoom zoom in to this move to the upside on the 15 minute right then what you can see is with this low we have over here then price making higher lows sorry with this low over here so a higher low in price we have a lower low on yellow and on blue bullish cvd here but already played out and then over here price dipped again creating more bullish cvd divergences higher low in price lower low on cvd that's the second CVD divergence. And now with this dip to the downside, you can see the yellow line keeps falling. Price moving up, the yellow line keeps going down. And now this candle over here just now created more bullish CVD divergences. That's the third divergence with this low. And from a probability standpoint, the more CVD divergences you get with the same low or high, 
the lower the probability it plays out. So that's something we have to keep in mind, right? So let's see and observe what price is going to do more locally, especially as price just had some news at 8 p.m. Central European time. That's already past 8 p.m. I know, but this can increase volatility for at least the upcoming few hours, maybe before 10 p.m. as at 10 p.m. Central European time, the New York market closes. So if there's any big moves, then we prefer to see those before 10 p.m. And then again, keep an eye on the target areas that I have to the upside over here between 27.7, 27, 27 uh, you know, but basically 28k, as well as to the downside in case price is dropping. But for now, we're just ranging over here. If we then finally zoom out and look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then on the medium time frame, the probabilities are higher for price to make at least another low. We have a double bottom over here that is created at 24.750, a big uh, magnet for price. And in general, price tends to uh, like take these double bottoms and then we're going to be looking for lower prices now the way price moves to the downside as you can see i don't have a scenario on my chart yet because i didn't have too much time to do analysis after coming back from holiday and speaking immediately at an event uh, but there's two scenarios in mind e either we get this over here uh, which is currently the preferred scenario where the invalidation is price taking this high. So we just get continuation down. Secondly, price continuing to the upside, creating then some sort of an A, then you have a wave B and then a wave C to the downside where price can go higher to around the 29, 30K area before returning down. So we have a very, very clear invalidation of the um, like bearish scenario, which is this one over here, where we are looking for this to happen clear invalidation over here and if price takes this high then the new medium time frame low scenario i suppose or a medium time frame bearish scenario is that we get something like this but that is of course again yet to be seen so i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye